So in this video, we're gonna cover three of the main misconceptions about 3D printing and why they don't really actually matter anymore and haven't for pretty much a decade. Let's get started. So very often when you talk to a normal layperson about 3D printing, there's several ideas inside of their mind that are used to describe 3D printing. And those three words are slow, crappy, and expensive. Slow meaning that it takes a long time to make a part, therefore it takes a long time to make a lot of parts. Crappy meaning that the quality is bad, whatever that means. It might have layer lines, it might not be strong enough, whatever it might be. And then expensive, it costs a lot to make a part. All of these are incorrect for very simple reasons anymore. So the first one is the slowness. 3D printing is not slow at all. Today, many machines can make thousands of parts in a day. Large resin systems are able to put thousands of parts on a single build plate inside of print farms, you're able to have thousands of machines working in parallel so that even though it might require an hour to grow a single part, if you have thousands of machines, you're now making thousands of parts an hour. So the system, the print farm, is able to produce as fast as an injection molding system. And parts can be gotten out so much quicker because you don't have to wait a month for the tool to be made or for the preparation to be made. You just have to upload a file and prepare it a bit. Parts get started faster, so you get parts in the mail sooner and they're made closer to you so that the total project time is very often less than the total project time of traditional manufacturing, where you have some other country make it, ship it across the ocean on a boat, which takes a couple weeks, and then sorts through customs, comes to you, gets sorted out into the warehouses, and then it's distributed. Instead, you order the parts, they show up in UPS a week or two later, and you have something to start with. Second is the descriptor of crappy. And crappy means a lot of things, and it also means nothing at all. Crappy means different things to different people. Inside of aerospace engineering, you have to have 10,000 engineering precision when you're machining a component. But if you are building a chair or building a house, you only have to be precise down to a quarter inch or maybe even sometimes a whole inch. So precision and quality of dimensionality varies depending on what the part is. If you're making a tchotchke, the quality is lower than if you're making a Lego. 3D printing is able to hit very high tolerances right now of below 0.1 millimeters, which is a fantastic tolerance and almost as good as traditional machining in many contexts. It just requires very high system control in order to hit that. It's not difficult to hit and resin systems, powder bed systems, FDM systems are all able to hit the same engineering tolerances and precision as traditional machining. So the idea that somehow the quality of the part is less is a little bit incorrect as far as dimensionality. Now, many people talk about the strength of parts, which is generally referred to as the isotropy or the non-isotropic nature of the parts themselves. This is the idea that, oh, 3D printed parts are weaker in the Z axis than they are side to side, which is different from traditional parts that are homogenous, meaning that they are exactly the same in every direction. But this is also silly because composite parts are also non-isotropic and carbon fiber works well for plane wings. The point of this is that you have to design for the process that you're using. If a 3D printed part needs to be stronger in the Z axis, make that axis thicker. So even though the layer adhesion might reduce the normal material strength of the part, you put more area in that direction so that you make up for it. So if in the Z direction along the layers, a 3D printed part will break at 15% less, we'll add 15% more surface area to that nick that's gonna break off, and now you have the same strength as any other machining process. So is 3D printing worse? No, it's just simply different. Design for that process and you no longer have the, the crappy issue. And as far as consistency, this has been solved just by modern machine design. The printer that is in your neighbor's garage that he messes around with has no relevance whatsoever to the quality of a part that can be produced by a professional organization with a professional machine. So quality is dependent on the project itself and it it needs to be defined by the client, and 3D printing can meet most quality standards in almost every situation. Heck, it is 3D printing rockets right now. That's not a new idea. So if aerospace can deal with it, everybody else below that is also probably able to find an application that works fine with it. Myth number three, 3D printing is way too expensive to manufacture products. And this has been an issue for a long time, but it's not necessarily because of the printing process itself. If you look at engineering and manufacturing in general, the cost of a product is the cost of the inputs. If you look at like traditional injection molding, well, you have electricity that heats up the mold and then you have the plastic going into the mold and then you have the mold itself, which are all required to be the base elements to make a part. 
However, if you look at 3D printing, you only have the electricity and then the plastic. So why is 3D printing more expensive when molding has more inputs? Well, the main reason historically has been labor. 3D printed parts are very labor intensive to post process and prepare. Powder bed systems require the powder to be sucked away and cleaned and dyed and all the rest of this. Resin systems require a huge amount of touch. But this can be minimized and this can be manufactured around. If you commit to 3D printing, processes can be created to knock off support and automatically remove and process a piece when it comes off of a machine. 3D printing just generally is not deployed at large scale, so it has a higher cost of labor because it's doing lower volumes. The other issue is that it's doing lower volumes. If you do a low quantity of parts, it is more expensive to make those parts because you have all the upfront costs. So if 3D printing was used, the supply chain and the rest of the infrastructure can be built up to support it. And the supply chain is another component of that. If you look at 3D printing right now, it's very heavily biased towards consumers. And since consumers don't care what they pay for the raw material, it's like buying printer ink, they pay a premium for the raw materials. So the raw materials for mass production, FDM printing at least, are very expensive. And other technologies have very expensive materials because they're new. They have not hit the scale of like injection molding beads where the cost is almost negligible. But 3D printing can hit all of those things, it's just a question of scale. Like right now at Slant 3D, we use the reference of 100,000 pieces. If you're making more than 100,000 pieces, go with a mold, that's fine. But if you're making fewer than 100,000 pieces, you should very seriously consider 3D printing because you don't have the mold cost, you don't have to produce as many parts all at once, so you don't have as big of a risk right up front and as much capital expenditure. And if you design for the process and manage it, then it can be as cost effective, if not more cost effective, than any other manufacturing process because it gives you so much more flexibility and de-risks the chance of getting a product wrong, which doesn't occur with any other process. 3D printing is not expensive anymore. The cost of materials has come down and the scale of the systems have gotten so large that you can produce hundreds of thousands of parts as affordably as any other process. If you design for it, intend for it, and then set your standards very clearly, you can make almost any sort of part that you want, again, so long as you're hitting scale and you are prepared for that process the same way you prepare for any other process. You design for machining, you design for molding, you design for hand fabrication. Those all have restrictions and requirements and 3D printing is no different. So slow, crappy, and expensive are three of the most inaccurate words that you can possibly use to describe 3D printing. Have a great day, everybody.